In a recent video, I took apart my brand new washing machine just to show the components inside and one of them was the water level switch and the water level switch works by having a pipe connected onto this unit here and it goes down to the bottom of the drum, uh, the sort of drain outlet and by measuring the pressure it knows the height of the water in the drum. And I thought this was just like a traditional old one that uh, has switch contacts and the, it goes through various levels of pressure hitting the, uh, clicking the switches in but I've been told that these things actually have a, a sort of analogue output they're basically a linear pressure transducer so I thought it'd be interesting to see inside one but rather take the one out of my machine and risk bursting it I bought a second hand one online that's been stripped out of an existing machine so let's open it up and see what's inside now I notice in the top it says one 5 volt, 2 ground and 3 out, so that's the 5 volt and the ground of the supply and the 3 is going to be the output voltage I'm guessing, or pulses, I'm not sure if it's going to be a analogue voltage, I'd guess analogue voltage, but I could be wrong. So is this going to come out easily? Or am I going to break it? Uh, I'm going to break it anyway, aren't I? Oh, I've already broken this. Um. So how else is this held together? Oh, it's kind of coming out. Oh, there we go. Interesting. Right. So we've got a little chip on top. It's a one chip device with just a few support components. Let's uh, zoom in on this so we can take a closer look. The chip on top is, oh blimey, it's a standard TTL, 74, well CMOS TTL, 74HC4060. 4060, is that not a binary counter? That's a, it's a binary counter but with an oscillator. And that might mean that the inductor here, this could be pulses then. It does look like it could be pulses. And if that's the case, I wonder what speed the pulses are coming out at. Intriguing. Right, uh, let's get further into it. I was expecting it to be a dedicated microcontroller or something in there. Or some dedicated chip specific to the task. Oop, this is it. This is very broken now. That's okay. We got it to open up. I, I should actually have it in shot, shouldn't I? That would be so much better. It's the curse of zoom. So there's a diaphragm, and there's a spring that pushes against it lightly. I wonder why that is. And as the pressure increases, that diaphragm is going to push up. It's got a, what looks like a ferrite core on it, so that is going to change. There's another spring up the end. Uh, so that is going to change the inductance of that coil as the pressure increases and this core gets pushed in. I wonder how it calibrates, or if it is generically calibrated out of the factory, which I'm guessing it would be. Right, I'm going to have to experiment with this. I'll be back in a moment. Well, that was quite interesting. It actually comes down to quite a low frequency, low enough that you can see the pulses in the LED here. So at the moment it's running about 12 hertz, but if I uh, push this core into the middle of that coil, you can actually, if you watch the LED, you'll see the speed of the LED flashing slowed down quite uh, notably. And the frequency in the meter drops to about 8.5 hertz. And if I push this in and out, you'll, if you watch the LED, you'll see a quite distinct change in the speed that it flashes at. That's quite interesting. Now, the circuitry, it looks like this. And it's absolutely optimised for manufacturing ease and cost. Notice a little indent in the circuit board here. The circuit board is designed to slip into the plastic casing and when it's slid in a guide, it clicks in. And at the point it's clicked in, then the wires from this coil are just simply wound around these and soldered. And the fine tuning of the uh, speed, I guess they just basically set the, the base frequency, is done with this... Uh, large plastic grub screw that pushes down a spring inside which sort of calibrates the uh, pressure against the diaphragm. 
The chip in here is a binary counter with built-in oscillator, and it's really quite interesting. It's got two capacitors and an inductor in the same sort of format, and I'll show you this afterwards, but the two capacitors are connected to the zero volt rail, and the inductor is connected across a gate, and I'll show you. I've doodled out a schematic, and it forms an oscillator in conjunction with this resistor. On the output, you've got a 100 ohm resistor, 101, which is 10 zero and 10 zero after it, which is 100 ohm, and that's going to the output. Uh, and then all you've got at the other end here is a capacitor across the plus 5 volt and 0 volt. It's a very, very simple circuit. A cheap chip, simple uh, inductive sensor. It really is cutting things back to the absolute minimum required to do the job. It's clever, very clever. Uh, here we've got a 201, 20 and 10, 200 ohm resistor. Uh, I'm not sure what the value of these capacitors are. I'd guess they're quite low, sort of picofarady types of level. I'd guess that's also 100 nanofarad. But I'll bring the uh, schematic in and you can actually see in more detail what's happening here. So we've got the... Uh, Binary counter with uh, inverter gate and input. Now, the inverter gate has that small, uh, actually, it, where is the, uh, no, I don't have the paperwork for that. This, I'm guessing, has probably got sort of Schmidt trigger tendencies. I might be wrong, but it's an inverter. And uh, usually in a crystal oscillator, you'd have the two capacitors going to the zero volt rail, and you'd have the crystal and then a, a resistor. But in this case, they've just used the inductor in, in its place, which kind of makes variable feedback, I guess, which is what changes the frequency when the inductance of that changes. Uh, this does have a extra gate in here, which uh, can be used. Uh, in fact, you know what, I'll do that right now. I shall take this probe off here, bring the meter back into shot, and I shall probe the buffered output of that, because that won't affect the oscillator frequency. And you'll see that uh, with the core out, that's about 12 hertz it's putting out. If I touch the probe onto that, while trying to keep my fingers clear of the oscillator, it goes to about, the meter displays about 214 kilohertz. 214 kilohertz. The binary counter, uh, the, it's, not got the, it's not got every single tap from the binary divider, but the binary counter rapidly divides 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, all the way down to the point that uh, by the time it gets to Q14, it's divided by 16,384. And if you divide, uh, with the core completely removed, if you divide the 214 kilohertz, that's the highest frequency will go with the core removed, then th you divide that by the 16,384 of the binary counter and you get about 13 hertz out. So that's how they're bringing it down to, it, it's very clever, it's a single chip that's not just the oscillator, it's dividing that down to the point that the washing machine can literally uh, look at it, it, it can send a routine to look at that input pin, it can see the change of state, and this is a 50-50 mark space ratio because it is through a binary counter. It can wait for it to say go low and then time how long it takes to go high again, and that will give it an indication of the amount of water in the machine from the sort of time of that, the time it took. Or it could count the number of pulses, which should be fairly straightforward. It could have that going into a clock, a clock counter input, which it could just uh, Pull it for a certain length of time, um, and it would then count the number of pulses that had occurred in that time. It is quite a small variation. It goes from about the twelve to the eight. It's not. It's not like a zero to five volt type arrangement, or even a sort of like a, a wide frequency range. It's just that small area. But everything will be calibrated and tuned in the washing machine to detect that. So it's very simple. Very, very simple indeed. That's quite neat. 100 nano. Like everything else in the washing machine, because it's mass produced, instead of using an expensive pressure transducer, they've basically uh, improvised this simple pressure transducer with just a cheap generic logic chip uh, and a few components in this simple wound coil. And it just means that everything is just super simple. So that is quite neat. That's very impressive. The design behind that was quite clever.